Crystal growth of metals during solidification. In the linked video, we have explained the conditions for the solidification of metals in more detail. Here we summarize the most important statements once again. For a molten metal to solidify, there must be supercooling, which means that the temperature of the molten metal must be below the solidification point. On the other hand, nuclei must be present that provide the necessary activation energy to trigger solidification. Foreign particles, for example, can serve as nuclei, which are particles that consist of a different substance than the particles of the melt. This type of nucleation is also known as heterogeneous nucleation. However, the melt's own particles can also serve as nuclei. This type of nucleation is then called homogeneous nucleation. Both homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation will be discussed in more detail in separate videos. If stable nuclei form in the supercooled melt, solidification begins. With the release of heat, also called heat of solidification, further atoms from the melt attach themselves to the emerging lattice structure. The nucleus begins to grow and initiates the phase of nucleus growth or crystal growth. The particles accumulate by diffusion through the melt, where they hit the surface of the solidified crystal. There, the atoms diffuse to energetically favorable locations. Decisive for the shape of the growing crystal is the direction of heat dissipation at the solidification front. Depending on whether the heat of crystallization is dissipated through the solidified crystal or through the adjacent melt, a distinction is made between polygonal crystal growth and dendritic crystal growth. These types will be discussed in more detail in the following. If, for example, a nucleus forms on the surface of a mold wall, the heat of crystallization released at the growth front is often dissipated through the solidified crystal and then through the vessel wall. This is due to the fact that the melt generally has a higher temperature than the mold wall and heat dissipation ultimately always takes place in the direction of decreasing temperature. A positive temperature gradient is therefore obtained in the direction of the melt. This is especially the case when the melt is only slightly supercooled. The crystal then grows into a region with a higher temperature. Any branching of the crystal that may occur would then remelt. The solidification front therefore remains relatively flat. This is then also referred to as a stable growth front. Depending on how strong the heat dissipation through the crystal is, rather round crystals grow, which are then called globulites, or rather elongated crystals, which are called columnar crystals. The polygonal crystal growth also explains the typical three-zone microstructure of a solidified cast ingot. Such a microstructure is also referred to as a primary microstructure, since it is usually heat-treated afterwards. During the formation of the primary microstructure, a very fine-grained microstructure with roundish grains is formed near the vessel wall due to the strong isotropic supercooling by the cold wall. After that, a zone with elongated grains is formed due to the heat dissipation strongly directed towards the vessel wall. This zone is also referred to as the transcrystalline zone. Inside the cast ingot, a very coarse-grained microstructure is formed due to the relatively low but almost isotropic undercooling. Subsequent heat treatment can transform this heterogeneous primary structure into a homogeneous secondary microstructure with the desired properties. Let us now take a closer look at dendritic crystal growth. Here, heat is not dissipated via the crystal as in polygonal crystal growth, but through the melt. This is the case when the melt is severely supercooled and the nucleus forms in the middle of the melt. A negative temperature gradient is obtained in the direction of the melt. The crystal then grows into a region with a lower temperature. A branching that forms will continue to grow very quickly, as the colder melt crystallizes rapidly at the branching. The crystal forms branches that look very much like a fir tree structure. Such structures are called dendrites. The microstructure shows copper with increased oxygen content. During solidification, bluish shimmering copper 1 oxide, also called cuprous oxide, has formed, showing dendritic crystal growth. The micrograph shows only the dendritic branches cut in the plane. The dendrites are embedded in the eutectic matrix with finely distributed copper and copper oxide. In dendritic crystal growth, there is a fundamental risk that the melt cannot flow into the spaces between the branches. Microscopically small cavities, so-called microshrinkages, are formed. 
Dendritic crystal growth is also seen in water, for example when raindrops crystallize into snowflakes on cold winter days. The hexagonal lattice structure of the ice leads to the typical six main branches of the snowflake, from which several smaller branches diverge. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.